Hey, my friends, I may have made a significant mistake. Um, I wanted to order some lightweight wheels for the Rivian for hopefully better efficiency, faster acceleration, those kind of things. And so I looked around for like the most cost effective and lightest weight wheels possible. Uh, and so I found the company Atomic Wheels. Uh, literally, I just got a marketing email from them last week that like celebrating our one year anniversary. Um, they're a new company without a huge amount of track record. Uh, they tend to make EV wheels. They have lots of Tesla advertisements and whatever. They have a factory in China that makes what they claim to be fully forged uh, CNC machined billet aluminum wheels. And here I have a set of four of them. So they claim to be forged. Um, am I really going to know for sure if they are as strong as the original wheels until we go off-roading somewhere? Not really. You know, I, I truly don't know. I mean, I, I don't mean to piss off Atomic Wheels by saying this in a video. Are they going to crumple up like a beer can? I don't know. We're, we're going to find out together. Um, I sure hope not. Uh, also, w when I got my Rivian, I kind of got it, 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 the color scheme from a practical standpoint. Um, you know, in, in my life, I get lots of dust on my vehicle and, and bird poop very quickly. So I got silver. I got the most essentially uh, uh, dust friendly color possible. And, and between that and also the bright rims weren't even available anymore in the 20 inch off-road category, I got the black ones. So the black and the silver, it's really kind of a, a muted, uh, kind of bland style, unless you happen to be a Raiders fan or something like that. So um, I'd like to add a little more color to the vehicle, a little more bling perhaps. So I don't really know what's in this box. Um, they are supposed to be antique bronze. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be like super bright, like gold colored or I'm hoping more of a smoky, dark, gunmetal honey kind of color. I truly don't know. Let's open it up and find out. Kind of a solid core foam on top. Uh, just kind of a broken piece of it. Um, it looks big enough to protect the wheel, but that is a little um, slapdash, but okay. Uh, looking at the top here, we have uh, the wheel itself is in a nice baggie with uh, extra more properly formed foam padding around the edges. We've got some also nice solid cardboard bits protecting the rim, so th the rim of the rim, so that's nice to see. off easily enough that hoop of foam and now the big reveal oh my oh my yes I need I need better light um, hang on all right nice Nice. So the antique bronze has these kind of um, striping to it. Wow, that looks so awesome. That looks so awesome. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. What does that say right in there? Can it focus? Forged atomic wheels. 20 by 8.5 and the bolt pattern, blah, blah, blah. Offset 48, which is spot on. DOT max load 1170 kilograms. Atomicwheels.com. All right, time for the weigh in. Twenty-six. Just thinking about it. Twenty-six point two pounds for these beauties. All right, let's go ahead and swap the wheels. Oh, God damn. Oh. Here we go. Um, 
38.8 pounds. 38.8 pounds? I'm remembering now. It was 26.2, 38.8. Uh, Twelve pounds? Over 12 fucking pounds difference? Holy shit. Uh, well, there's only one thing next to do. We gotta go talk to Seabiscuit. So we're here actually at the uh, Tanferan Mall in San Bruno, just outside of South San Francisco. And right over there is the, uh, I guess maybe antique bronze statue of Seabiscuit. Uh, wasn't joking. Uh, essentially, we just drove from Silicon Valley all the way up El Camino Real, all the way up here to South San Francisco. And uh, for those of you who don't know, El Camino Real is like a, I don't know, 35, 40 mile an hour kind of main thoroughfare that goes up the peninsula here in Silicon Valley. And it's, uh, we just fought our way through traffic, kind of simulate, you know, maybe trail performance, but basically low speed, stop and go kind of performance. I'm hoping to see some sort of improvement in efficiency because we're spinning up and then slowing down uh, far lighter rims than we did before. Uh, now the second part of our journey, we're actually gonna go from here and then loop back on the highway. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, lock in the cruise control at 70, going back south and finish the loop and go ahead and kind of have two halves of our benchmarking run, one street and one highway. So we can then compare those numbers. Let's go ahead and rock on. Just over 50 pounds of rotational mass reduced by adding these rims. But of course the vehicle itself is over 7,000 pounds. So you have an incredible reduction from an incredible mass to start with. So how does this actually work out? So on the way up, we drove 32 and a half miles. We burned yet much power. We drove 35 and a half miles coming back and we burned yet much power. And then we go ahead and look at the totals as well. But let's look at this on a percentage basis and compare it to the previous line, row four there, which is just with the rooftop tent on above and beyond stock, right? So on the street segment of our journey, we saved basically 4% in our range, which is a pretty solid and hefty reduction and takes our consumption, our, our miles per kilowatt hour, way above actually original stock trim, even before the rooftop tent. Because the rooftop tent really isn't impacting anything aerodynamically at those lower speeds. You've got a little bit more weight, but it's not a huge impact. And we just went up to 2.428, which is pretty incredible. On the highway, again, the big thousand dollar question would be, does that reduction in mass really help? Or uh, does the open face rim cause substantial aerodynamic drag and therefore doesn't help much? The answer is it did help, not by much. We should probably round this down to 2%, um, but it did help. And, and for those of you who are thinking, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, I was on cruise control at 70 the whole damn way, except for getting onto the freeway and off the freeway. Um, and those of you who, who maybe can't believe that reducing the rotational mass helped, that much. I mean, 2% isn't a huge amount, but still, why did it help at all? The, the world just is not as Newtonian as you may think it is. There's no harm in going for an open-faced, very lightweight wheel, um, at least at this scale of things. You know, if you had a not so lightweight wheel that was open face, would that really help or would that hinder? That's a test I don't have data for you to talk about, but um, I could imagine there would be a, a crossover point there somewhere. But let's talk about it from the standpoint of actual miles of range. So uh, just doing our, our basic stock level uh, measured efficiency on the street and then multiplying it by 142 kilowatts, that gives us 336 miles of range on the street. Rooftop tent cut that a little bit, but then we jumped up back up to 345. So essentially we are up by nine miles from stock and we're up uh, 13 miles uh, from when we had the rooftop tent on. So um, we gained a good chunk of miles of range for presumably street driving, for trail range. You know, when we go off-roading or on dirt trails and stuff, having better range at these lower speeds is actually really a fantastic thing. On the highway, it didn't change much, right? You know, from row four to row five here, we gained, what, seven miles? Uh, that's 2%, you know, big, big whoop-de-doo, honestly. I, but again, it's nice that it went in the right direction. 
Uh, and then the total, if we add everything together, the total mixed range, right? So we went from 343 stock down to 316, and then we've added nine miles. We're up to 325 combined. Um, and if you watched our other video talking about closing off the roof vents, right? That's that sixth row here. Uh, that's that data, which is freaking incredible, which didn't help pretty much at all on the street, but on the highway that netted us a huge amount of range. The combination of these two uh, things, the lightweight rims to help out in the street, and then the aerodynamic changes from closing those roof vents on the highway has really been a, a boon to regaining all the efficiency and more uh, that we have lost when we put on the rooftop tent. So it's pretty cool. Next thing to try out, let's go ahead and do some zero to 60 and quarter mile testing. Let's go ahead and take off the rooftop tent and plug in the draggy and give it a shot. Launch. Our results on the left the stock configuration in the middle the atomic rims and on the right just for giggles the all-purpose mode again with the atomic rims and the difference is basically nothing it could not be more identical if you tried the uh, weather was slightly warmer about 11 degrees warmer ambient temperature but that is the only real difference i see here at all i mean really folks there was no difference and, and even from the butt dyno perspective, did it ever feel faster? No, no, it didn't. Uh, zero to 60, it's got wheel spin all the way up to like 35 miles an hour-ish in that ballpark. And so any extra acceleration you know, in that window between, you know, traction being limited and 60 miles an hour is is close to nothing. And then in the quarter mile time, right, I was slamming into the speed limiter at 110 miles an hour long before the quarter mile mark. And, and and so, right, also at the top end of things, that's going to kind of even things out as well. You know, honestly, if I'd thought of this ahead of time, what I really should have done is done all purpose mode acceleration, both with stock and then the atomic rims, because that would remove the wheel spin. That's basically the difference here. If you look at all purpose mode, we are one second slower, zero to 60. And then our overall quarter mile time is basically one second slower. And so it's basically shaving off that peak wheel spinning acceleration from zero to 60. That is all all purpose mode is doing versus standard mode. So you can see it here. If you look at the acceleration graph, right? That's the, uh, the kind of orange peach, whatever color graph here. Um, right here at basically the 1 16th mile mark, uh, you have acceleration of basically half a G. And the same thing in the all-purpose mode here on the right, your acceleration is half a G there at the 1 16th of a mile. And so basically it's that first 45 miles an hour. Um, the acceleration is harder with the performance mode, with the sport mode, um, and then all-purpose mode, it's the same from 45 miles an hour plus on up to the quarter mile mark. Um, so that's your difference between the two. And again, from a butt dyno standpoint, when I put on the atomic rims, I never really felt a significant difference in acceleration but there was there was something that really leaped out at me the moment that i got them on uh two things actually one was the steering was much much lighter if you think about it those front two wheels about 26 pounds worth of uh, rotational mass those are gyroscopes and those are fighting you're turning the wheel in any direction and any any change in direction gets fought by a gyroscope and you can really feel it it's a substantial difference uh, also, when kind of just crashing along broken pavement, the suspension doesn't jostle you around nearly as much uh, in a really noticeable way. Essentially, you're you're removing that unsprung weight, which allows the suspension then to work better uh, without transmitting more of that force into the rest of the bodywork. Uh, and so, those two things actually were very apparent. Um, so, so long story short, at the end of the day, here the atomic rims which full disclosure, those cost $2,200 delivered to my door um, for the four forged rims that essentially netted us 4% efficiency in street driving, 2% efficiency in highway driving. They look badass 
and a lighter steering feel and better handling over rough terrain. So definitely a marked improvement, maybe not as much as you'd hoped. You know, I, I would have really liked to see like one tenth, two tenth difference in the uh, quarter mile numbers, but that's just not borne out by what I saw here. You know, maybe with more traction, right? If I actually went to a, like a drag strip with a properly prepared surface and that kind of stuff, then I really could have seen the difference. Um, and, and there must be a difference there. I mean, you know, if, if there's a if there's a 4% efficiency gain, um, then there really should be a percent or two or three difference in just raw acceleration. But on the street and in the butt dyno, you just don't feel it. You just don't feel it. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, please stay tuned. If you haven't caught it, there were previously two episodes of this series. There was the one talking about cooler power, right? And how to use the new automatic mode for the AC ports to go ahead and reduce your phantom drain. Also, we plugged up the vents on the roof to go ahead and improve aer aerodynamic efficiency when you've got a rooftop tent on top. And the fourth episode that will be coming soon, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we're doing some fun games, the 12 volt system to go ahead and again, try to reduce phantom drain. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Take care.